Hey, welcome back to part four of the log splitter rebuild. I promise you this is the last of the one in the series and I want to go over all of the different things that I've done to this log splitter and how they've benefited me and we will actually get into the uh, fabrication process of what I did to get to this point and if you haven't seen the three previous videos go check them out but uh, I wanted to do something very unique with this splitter something that uh, I don't think that I've ever seen done before and probably 99% of you have probably never seen it done either and that is this moving table or the moving tray and we'll get into showing you that in a little bit but uh, there's been a lot of neat things I've done to this so let's go ahead and get into the fabrication process of what I've done and then we will uh, go ahead and show you this thing in operation what I'm doing right now is trying to see if I can relocate the valve here and I want to move it to up here for one gets it up a little higher two makes it easy to use from either side and three and mostly is I want to put a stop point on here so when it returns it hits this detent and when it returns back so if I've got it in the, the forward position goes forward and when the ram comes back I've got it in the return position and I'm gonna have a bump stop at about 18 inches so it bumps that and stops it every time at 18 so if I'm out splitting rounds up and 99% of them are 16 to 17 inches it'll always stop and that'll be about nine inches less that this thing will travel every cycle so that'll help speed up the efficiency without uh, putting a whole lot of money into the ram or anything like that and I'm gonna try and do it with the existing lines so I don't have to spend a lot of money on those. All right, I got the valve off of there. This is the platform, and it is welded to a piece of uh, bracket that goes down underneath. It's welded to the I-beam. What I want to do is cut it off right here and relocate this up on top of here so it puts that valve there so it creates an easier way to run a stopper back to it. Well, you can see I got it cut off from right here, cut that off, and brought it up and rewalded it to this bracket that was originally here. And now that brings my valve body up here where I wanted it. So it's uh, up nice and high, can reach it from both sides of the machine rather easy. And now that gives me a pretty free and clear way to run something down through here for a stopper that comes back and hits that couple things I had to do in order to not go out and buy a new $70 hose to be able to still use the same one is I had to put a uh, 45 on that to give me a little more line to come up here and then I also had to do a couple extra fittings up here and that was just to bring it back to this original fitting that was in here um, it doesn't look horrible but uh, it will work and it was all just to to clear everything to keep all the hoses looking the way they should. The only hose that looks a little bit hokey is this one, but I did that intentionally, like I showed you from the front side, to give me clearance through there so there would be no interference coming through there. Right, so to try and keep you in the loop, what I'm trying to come up with here is this tube will be the sleeve that this other one rides in. And that was the whole reason for wanting to raise up this control and putting it over the center. So over here, I would have had a long arm sticking way out to try and reach that. And I had the gas tank and some other things to work around. This way, like I showed you, it's free and clear now underneath the, the uh, valve. So this thing can slide back and forth. I'll put a stopper on it, it bumps that, and it stops my return stroke. I just need to make up some mounts to go on there. So I found a piece of aluminum that'll work for the uh, stopper and uh, just roughly cut it out on the bandsaw. Now I've got to drill and tap two holes in there. I'm going to do 3816 on them. And that is what's going to bolt down on the top of this plate here. And I'll drill two clearance holes through that to be able to bolt them up underneath. That will hold this tube. So go ahead and drill these two holes out and get them tapped so I can bolt that down.
Well, I've got those two holes done. Like I said, 3 8 16. And yes, I power tapped them. Something I learned to do back in my uh, apprentice days in the tool and die industry. But uh, those two are tapped in there and it will be getting bolted down onto the top plate there. I'm gonna contour this a bunch so I never have to worry about catching anything on it when I bend over or anything like that. But uh, it'll have a nice radius across there. Then we'll be putting a hole in here for this tube to go through. And then I'll have a screw that goes down in and uh, either pinches on this tube or goes through the tube. I'm not sure yet which. Uh, I used aluminum here because I didn't want this to ever rust onto this tube. So that way it would be easy to take out and do whatever. But uh, anyhow, now I got to finish contouring this and drilling and tapping the top two hole or just drilling the two clearance holes in the top of that. And then drill this hole in here for the tube. And then that'll give me my height location where I need to mount that back sleeve to allow that tube to slide through it. All right, so I got this bracket mounted on here. I showed you how I tapped and bolted that to that. I've got the tube in there now with the bolt going through it. And one thing that I had to make sure of is this head here, it moves. So I could not rigid mount this tube into this hole. So I had to drill an oversized hole for this, bigger than the tube, to allow this tube to also float. So when this head twisted, and because I'm gonna have a solid mount back here off of this sleeve, the front of this tube had to be able to move back and forth. Otherwise, it would have slid back and put this into a bind in that back section. So that's one thing that I needed to make sure I got done. Well, it's all done and it works. I'm just gonna give you a quick sneak peek of it now, but I'll show you it in operation. Uh, I'm actually working on something else for this splitter, prototyping something here that I have never seen before. Doesn't mean somebody didn't do it. Just means that I've never seen it after searching and searching and couldn't find it anywhere. So stay tuned and keep watching to figure out what the heck I'm making here and to see how well this functions. I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it. A life worth living is a life with meaning. I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating. I'm feeding this demon. Got a taste, can't erase bitterness in my face. Work a job every day till your dreams fade away. Like a card, never change. Play the game that we say. I need a break. Time to stand strong. Need to move on. All right, we got it all clamped down in a little bit of a fixture here. That one will be on 30 degrees, and then I'm going to come over and when I'm done with this first one, I'm going to turn this one up on an angle on 30 degrees and weld that down it. I've got the two wings welded up, and I've got my 30 degree angle on there on each side. It might be what you think, but. Maybe you're looking at this going, hey, wait a minute. Picked up some tubing and showed you in the last part there that uh, got those wings on there. Got these all spaced out and made up some one inch uh, blocking to give it an equal spacing on each side. Everything's one inch out. And the same as this, one inch and it curls up both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to start tacking this up on here. And uh, I guess hopefully you're starting to figure out what's gonna happen with this. Got the uh, tray all welded on there and ready to go. I'm kind of holding out on a little bit of a secret here for you, but something I need to do or would like to do is 
when I put this uh, bracket on here for my return stopper, my concern is, is that a log will jump up over this at some point, or if I double stack logs here, one could slide up and break that off. I want to take and put that and weld it up on top of that to protect that bracket back there from anything ever hopping up. Now, that top piece there, the aluminum piece, is a stopper, so it's never anywhere as close. But having that exposed puts me at a liability for ripping it right off when a, a log should slide up over the push plate here. Okay, I got a couple rails here that I clamped on the top and bottom of the uh, pusher plate. The upper plate that I'm going to weld on, I've got a nice big deep groove in there, chamfer on it, so I can get a good uh, weld deep down into the root. Got it on this side, and I also put a good chamfer on the upper plate, so I can get it deep into that as well. And hopefully that won't break off. But I do think at some point I'm going to need a support coming here down or something like that to uh, ensure that it's not being held just by a weld there, but it should also have some kind of gusset support here. So I don't know what I'm going to do there yet, but I'll figure something out. And I got the riser plate all welded on. Protects this block now that uh, holds the return valve bump stop. Put a gusset in there. And uh, I don't think I should have any problems or issues at all with uh, a log hopping up now. It won't hit that. So I'm good to go there. And now I'm ready to paint the uh, basket or cradle or whatever you want to call it. Took it off of there. It's completely removable. The only thing that is not removable is this uh, undercarriage here, which allows this cradle to be held up. And I'm going to be painting it with this POR15 rust preventative. This is some of the best paint out there I've seen for painting over bare metal. No need to primer it. Uh, just take and clean this up real good with some uh, xylene or whatever. I like to use xylene because it's pretty good strong stuff. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and brush this on because it is almost like a ceramic paint. It gets a very, very hard coating. So this would be perfect paint for doing this. I can't powder coat something this size and I'm not gonna bother powder coating it. So I'm just gonna use the uh, POR15 paint in the gloss black. The rest of this I uh, spray painted, but you can see where it's all unbolted. It uses the same cradle there as the, the uh, pusher plate. Got that uh, all welded on there like I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and primer or uh, prep this and clean it all up and start uh, painting, get it all brushed on. What I've got is a piece of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It's a slippery polyethylene and it's going on there and I'm going to pop rivet that on and that is where that tray sits and it will give it some lubricity for when that thing slides and moves back and forth. If you're going to have a log splitter with chrome wheels and uh, you're going to want to be comfortable out here while well, you've got to make sure you have an umbrella and a place for your beverage. So I've got uh, two water bottle holders on that. And I just take and I 
put the umbrella in, open it up, and now I've got shade, and I've got a spot for my drink holder here. So there's some things on here that are pretty unique to this particular log splitter, and you've seen in all the other videos how I moved the oil tank and, and how I raised up the splitter to get it to the right height. Uh, I talked about making uh, this sliding tray. I talked about wanting a heat shield, which I also incorporated as a hood for this thing, and it's completely removable. But uh, first we have the umbrella on there. Second, we've got these chrome golf cart wheels that are a perfect size for the unit. It makes it look pretty darn cool. You see, I've got my stickers on it finally, so I got them done. And one thing I wanted to talk about real quick, and in the last video, talked about the heat that blows off of this thing. So you've seen how I bent this shield up. I put some support in it, put a lockdown knob on it. So some of you had suggested, hey, make sure you make it removable. Well, of course I'm gonna make sure it's removable. It needs to be, but one thing I do with this is I've made it so I can slide it over to check and fill the gas in it. And then should I need to actually take it off, I can remove the entire thing. And all it is is a uh, receiver tube here, got a little grease on it. And this just fits into the receiver tube, slides over. And there's my cover, my protection for my motor now. So put this little screw knob in it and that's what holds that thing down on there. That's what keeps it from vibrating, keeps the heat from blowing on me now, and it's actually comfortable. And some of you suggested that, okay, in the winter you want that heat. Well, in the winter, then I can remove this heat shield off of here and, and all work out well. Um, another thing that I really, really liked about what I was doing here was the cycle time on this. Because it's an old splitter, because it's very slow, I showed you how I made this return bump stop on here. And I've actually put markings on that so I know how wide it is from the, the pusher plate to the wedge. So I keep it at about 18 inches, which gives me a couple inches of a gap to spare for a 16 inch log. I know that that fits down in there and there is close to two inches there. So if I cut a log at anywhere from 16 to 18, I know it'll always fit in there. If I should ever need to go bigger, I can readjust this bump stop just on a little thumb knob. Do it here and it'll actually return a little further and it'll go to 21 inches if that's what I want it to go to. So we'll return that to there. And I think I showed you how this aluminum bump stop hits the piston here. So when it comes back, it bumps that and then uh, stops the stroke on that. And we'll show you in when we're running it here how that works. Now the, the most unique thing about this is this sliding tray. And as I was designing this, I was talking to Adam and I said, hey, I wanna make this tray slide so it returns the wood back to me. I think 100% of every tray I've seen on these conventional type splitters, the logs split and drop out up here. And the number one injury that most people get is in the twisting and pulling motion. So when they're reaching out over and pulling back the log to re-split, that's usually when they get hurt or do something or pull a muscle on their back. With this concept, it will split the log, they fall off onto the tray, and then as I return it, it brings those logs back to the position they were split in. And I'll show you how that works. This is pretty much the maiden voyage. I may lose one or two off to the sides, but the concept of this tray sliding back and forth is really what I was after. It is attached to the ram or the cylinder, and I think I showed you that in, the, in some of the previous video footage that I have. So that's what it returns with. It rides on this sliding tray where I used the uh, super slippery uh, UHMW material down there, and the whole tray slides back and forth. So. Let's go ahead and get into splitting some wood here and see how this thing really works. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. There's a place for the earmuffs. That way you have them there and available when you're ready.
can hear every single one of you in the background screaming, four-way wedge, four-way wedge. Yes, it would be simple to make a four-way wedge, but I didn't have one for this video, so it's not there. The one thing I didn't touch on was the addition of this uh, higher uh, portion of the pusher plate that I added to protect this uh, backstop for the, uh, the tube that holds that. That's made a huge difference because now it actually allows me to double stack logs and things like that. The, uh, the spacing of this allows all the trash to fall through, so I'm not fighting with that mess either. Uh, you guys have gotten to see this in action. No, it's not perfect. But I'm almost positive you've never seen anything like this before. It could be made wider, things like that. But the concept of it catching and returning the logs is what I was after. Uh, we just finished splitting up the rest of that basket. Got the rest of this thing done and it performed just as I would have expected. Granted, this thing, if you go back and look at what this was prior to its transformation, it was about a foot and a half lower to the ground and everything was completely backwards on it so i've gotten it to a point where i think it's going to be perfect for splitting the wood that i do here adam's going to be soon taking home his uh, easton made axes boo hoo hoo but uh anyhow it's it's a splitter that now i can use and utilize around here to split up rounds and get firewood taken care of so I guess if, uh, if you have any uh, comments, please leave them and let me know what you thought about this concept of the moving tray, how it catches the logs and bring them back, and I guess everything else that we've done to this. And now I've got a uh, splitter that used to be mine. I gave it to my father-in-law. He's had it for 25 years, hasn't run for three or four years now. I brought it back and refabbed everything I could think of on it. Um, nice having a little bit of a water bottle holder there but uh, leave me a comment leave me a thumbs up let me know what your thoughts were we'll see you again soon thanks